You can read complete coverage on Tennessee's win o over Oklahoma. You can also read the report card that Caleb has put together and the torch bears as we give out our awards to those top balls. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Caleb, do you want to start with a report card or torch bears? Your call, my man. We'll start with the uh, torch bears because okay. it was it was really hard to zero in on who the players who deserved it because a lot of them deserved it. Um, yes, I'm interested to see where you where you go. I purposely do not read your column. Not that I don't like your writing, but I like to see the direction you go and it be spontaneous on the air. So let's go ahead and start a poll question or I can do that um, as we go along. And you give me your torch bears. And these are how many players that stood out for the balls? It's always five, always five. And that makes it very hard because sometimes people can't make the list. But this is a very elite, superb, competitive list. Okay, and let's let's do it right now. I'll tell you if I agree or not that uh, these players were one of the top five performers in the game on Saturday against the Sooners. Here we go. All right, so the first, and this is a big shout out to Dave because, Dave, you predicted this. Mm. And I'm speaking, of course, of Jackson Moy. Oh, there had, you go. Had two tackles for a loss in this game, was actually one of the most disruptive defensive linemen on the field on Saturday Again, and we've been saying this all year, you could give the entire defensive line torch bears, but you have to pick players. And in this case, honestly, the best interior lineman was Jackson Moy on the day. Oh, well, Dave, look at you. Hey, now. All right. I think, I believe, and I was told in the preseason that they were saving Jackson Moy for this game. They were going to make sure he was 100%, 100% I... good to go and a bit of a surprise. And they, well... He delivered because he was amazing. The other guy who stepped up. And I hinted at it, but I didn't give anything away. All right, go ahead. The other guy who stepped up. And again, Tennessee has got that, the, I call it the hybrid edge rusher back. And what I'm talking about is the guy that can do three technique or five technique, Dave, but stays on stays up on the line. You know what I'm talking about? They could play in in a 3-4 or defensive tackle in a 4-3. Yes, and Tyree West fits that mold. Dominic Bailey fits that mold. Both of those guys have broken out. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, Jason Jenkins comes in. And steps up. And Jason Jenkins just blows past his guard for a safety. And that's to me, that was the play of the game. So he's on this list. Mm, that's crazy. I can't go that far. I don't think Jason Jenkins is one of the top five players. But that's fine. All right. What else you got? Big, big plays count, by the way. And he was also in on a sack. So I agree. I agree. All right. Number three. I only picked one offensive player from this game. And it is a guy who I wanted to see get a touchdown and he came close, but didn't happen. But Brew McCoy was the star of the game offensively. And it was it wasn't just four catches for 92 yards. Dave, you saw this. You talk about dictating coverage. Brew McCoy rolled the secondary over a lot, which was why Nico had that touchdown pass to Dante Thornton to begin with a lot of times and or a lot of other passes like that. And that first catch Brew had where he shed like five tackles to get inside the 10 yard line. And then the second one, which was a diving grab. I mean, I think Brew's presence was a allowed the offense to run at a much more efficient clip than it would have otherwise. Well, don't doubt this as well. Part of their running game benefited from his downfield blocking. If you ever wanted to, if your son plays receiver and you want to teach him how to be an all around receiver, just watch Brew McCoy. And you may have to go to the game because we can't always see the defensive backfield, but just watch him and how he blocks on running plays and say, son, do that. Yes, and I agree. And that type of effort translates. I mean, it, it translates well. Did you guys notice yesterday the player who Brew McCoy reminds me most of, Jawan Jennings? See, he had three touchdowns yesterday. He did. And it's about time. I can't believe an NFL team hadn't realized it. Oh, you may not be the fastest receiver, but man, you're physical and man, you like to hit and man, you like to block. Let's get this guy the ball. And it's I feel great. like that's McCoy. It's a great comparison. All right. Your next guy, uh, I like a lot, like a whole lot. I think he's Tennessee's best defensive back since Alante Taylor. And to be really honest with you, I might like him a little bit better than that. It's brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary <laughs> online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOK for 10% off. HOOK for 10% off. I love Jermon McCoy. Yes, he's number two on this list, and you can make a case for number one. 
he shut he's shutting down one side of the field in case you guys aren't noticing. I mean, even Alante Taylor didn't do that. Alante Taylor was a lockdown corner who did his job extremely well, so you didn't have to roll a safety over for help all the time. But there's a difference between that, Dave, and shutting down an entire side of the field. And I think they're about to I think teams are about to give up targeting him. Um, and I think that's going to be sooner rather than later. I mean, he had an epic, de- that, that interception was one thing because honestly that was more of an errant pass, but that deflection that he had on the drive before that's an NFL type of deflection. That's an NFL type of play where you can jump in front of the receiver, knock it away and not wrap your hand around the back of the receiver, which is how pass interference so often accidentally gets called. I mean, that was incredible. He's an NFL cornerback. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I hate it when people say Nico, 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 like, uh, I, I do a television show and there's somebody that wants to talk about Nico every single, every single time. And I'm kind of like, okay, I know he's good. I would have Nico on this list despite the pedestrian numbers because of his ability to manage a game. Maybe that's a reach, Caleb. Maybe that's something, you know, innate. Now, ball security, a strip sack's a strip sack. When a guy comes around the edge and knocks out of your hands, it's mostly on the tackle, Correct. Correct. Okay, but you could have better ball security. So you got to ding him for that. I don't have any problem with him not being on your list. I guess I could, I'm saying I could make an argument for him to be on the list. And before we get to the report card, I'm going to set up the poll question and I'm going to include Nico in it for that very reason. I'm just curious because I know you're very positive, Nico, but I'm curious to see some analytical numbers. Uh, when we put up the four guys that I've got in the poll question, who is the ball's torchbearer? Jackson Moy, Brew McCoy, Nico Ia Maleaba. And for the record, what did he think of Tennessee's conservative play calling at OU? I love our audience. Brilliant. 75%, way too conservative, 24%. All right. Report card is now. Start us Wait, off. Dude. You didn't even let me name my player of the game. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that would have been your number one guy. No, my number. Jermon McCoy is number two. My number oh, okay. one is, uh, and we got to send this guy a shout out. Joshua Josephs. I mean, yeah. this dude forced yeah. two fumbles in the first yeah. half. He did. No question about it. He's the player of the game. No yeah. question about it. Uh, Joshua Josephs um, is on the list. He's the one you should vote for. But if you want to vote for Brewer and uh, Nico because they touch the ball, that's fine. Report card time. Caleb, who leads us off? Uh, quarterbacks. And now, and this will kind of bolster your point, even though it was pedestrian numbers, I give Nico an A-. minus. I don't hold those fumbles on him at all, by the way. Um, I think he, again, given the flow of the game and the situation and the way Hypo called the game, I don't think there's much more Nico could have done. I don't think there's much more any quarterback could have done. Hey, now. I have no argument with that. I think an A-minus is perfect. Yeah, I, I put a little bit on the lack of ball security because I think he's young, stronger hands. But, again, that's that's nitpicking, kind of like when I said that he should have just taken the sack when he had a bust against NC State. Um, yeah. That's like an elite, elite quarterback top of level. So is ball control. All right, go ahead. What's next? All right, so next is going to be um, running backs, and I got an A minus with that. Um, Dylan Sampson, Deshaun Bishop, both fought hard. Um, wide receivers is an A. Tight ends is a C. Offensive line D plus, but they were banged up. But I, I, I can't look past that pass pro. Is that fair? Yeah, but I would have graded. I would have graded on a curve because I don't know. It, we channel that differently. I used to grade it on a curve due to injuries, but nevertheless, I graded it based on who played that day. And That's good. Yeah, and it who was strip bad. sacks is pretty hard to get a high grade. Yeah, exactly. Defensive line A plus. Linebackers A. Defensive backs A minus. The only reason of the A minus is Michael Hawkins' last two touchdowns late in the fourth quarter. You oh, you you side with me on defense on that? Yeah, that's your goal. And then uh, just to get the special teams and um, coaching, punting A minus would have been an A plus, but Jackson Arnold did have a punt go for a touchback. Place kicking A plus. Max Gilbert hit all three field goals. Josh Turbeville sailed every kickoff for a touchback. But Dave, return game is a D minus. Squirrel White made a he tried to field a punt early in the game that where he went back and dove to catch it on his own five, which is like rule number one, don't do. And it was just a real bad day for him in the return game, but. Coaching is an A+. Plus. I don't care what anybody says. Play calling was superb. Play calling was perfect. Coaching is an A+. Plus. I believe more in Josh Heupel after that game than I ever have before, and I thought he'd win a championship before. 